so powerful. And um, when I think about it, it's really how many of you have backend systems that are left alone for years that cause frustration uh, and we don't do anything about it? Just raise your hand, be brave. Just a few people, not everybody, okay. So um, that's what this process was at Lehman College. And the question becomes, it's not just about the technology, it's about how do you re-engineer uh, a process, how do you think of it differently, and how do you create a culture and climate that supports organizational change? Because this um, initiative um, is something that at the end of the day uh, creates um, such high levels of satisfaction for students, faculty, and staff. Students that would have to wait for weeks before they would get their, their credit transfer evaluation approved. That stopped them from registering that impacted potentially financial aid. So it is such an important role for, for Lehman because about 68%, is that correct, Lori, of our students are transfer students. But many of you also have high rates of transfer students. So the ability to have um, an electronic process that took a couple of years because it was so complex and bringing together um, different tools and really done internally with a brilliant team. So we have a wonderful team that we want to introduce, uh, and I'll ask them to introduce themselves, and then we'll start with Chrissy, right? So Chrissy, would you just introduce yourself? Sure. Elkin. Uh, Elkin Urea, Senior Web Application Developer. Chris, uh, Chris Bonacore, Director of Student Success Initiatives and Enrollment Management. And I should, I neglected to introduce uh, Data Perea, who runs our application services group, so let's give her a <laughs> has been so involved in this and I just neglected to uh, because I thought you were actually presenting and David Ling <laughs> is an occupation architect. So without further ado, I'll ask Chris to start. Thank you. Uh, we're really excited to show you our new ETCE system. Uh, before we get started, uh, does anybody or is anybody familiar with transfer credit evaluations? If you could raise your hand. Okay, so a good number of you. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, a transfer credit evaluation is the course by course evaluation of a student's prior credit at other institutions to show how it will transfer to our school. Uh, so. In this presentation, we're gonna give you a little bit of an overview of kind of our demographics at Lehman. We're going to explain our old process of the undergraduate faculty transfer credit review form, which is a mouthful. And then uh, we'll explain our new ETCE system. We'll discuss the impact it's had on students, faculty, and staff. We'll talk about lessons that we learned and our next steps, and we'll have Q&A at the end. So at Lehman, we have, for fall 19, our total enrollment was over 13,000 students. Uh, our entering degree-seeking students in fall 19 were, uh, who were transfers, it was about 68%. So it's really the majority of our students are transfers. Uh, we complete about 5,000 transfer credit evaluations every year. And an important figure for later is that 45% of the schools that we evaluate are non-CUNY schools. And so in the presentation, we're gonna show you how we went from, uh, on the left, uh, <laughs> manually writing out all the courses and the equivalents on carbon copies uh, to our new and beautiful ETCE system. <laughs> Especially in CUNY, 10 years is, uh, is really fast. <laughs> so, um, so once we went on CUNY first, we didn't have those carbon copy forms anymore. Uh, we needed a way to uh, evaluate courses that we didn't have the equivalent to already. We have thousands of courses in our database of rules, but when we come across courses we've never seen before, at Lehman we need to have faculty evaluate each and every course. Uh, so what we did is that we made a pseudo course for every discipline that we have, and it's called 8888, and that signifies that in that department that course is not evaluated. And that'll be important for ETCE because the fact that we know which department that course belongs to is how ETCE will know how to route the course to faculty. And um, just in the screenshot on the right, uh, it was very clear on the student's evaluation 
that they did have courses pending. Uh, this is the form that we came up with. We would give this form out to students um, and they would have to take it around the campus. They would get it signed off by faculty. And in this case, the student had three courses, which is pretty good, but this form could get to be about four pages long. So students really did not appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so consider, we were sending students who were new to our campus all over. We, we gave them a map, we gave them a directory, and that form, and we said, go find them. Uh, and so even when they did find faculty, uh, it, it could be a challenge because of office hours or faculty weren't available at that time. A lot of our students are around on the e uh, in the evening, so they may not have synced up with faculty. And we also, uh, we created common departmental advising days so that faculty would always be in their office at a specific time, but even then it may not work out for the student. And then January and August, which is you know peak time, would be frustrating for, for everybody because there were lines of students out the doors of the, the uh, faculty uh, departments, and it was really uh, a terrible experience for everybody. So what we used to do is when the student finally returned the form to us, we would tuck it into their folder and just hang on to it until we had a chance to update it. Um, if the student didn't return the form completed, we would put a hold on their record so say that we asked the student for, for uh, 10 um, equivalents and we got nine back, we would put a stop on them and then they couldn't mm -hmm. register next semester. And we had no way of tracking how many students had courses pending, how many actual courses were pending. We had no stats at all. So say that a student for fall had transferred in in May and they returned their form the next week we still wouldn't update them until September because we just didn't have a chance doing all the other students' evaluations for the fall. So that was a turnaround of like months that the students would have to wait. So now what we've done is admissions IT and student success initiatives have collaborated to create our new electronic workflow process and we're using multiple systems to do that. So we're using CUNY First to get the student data. We're using Process Maker for the workflows. Uh, Lehman 360, which is our homegrown portal and then we also are using uh, College Source has a test solution, which is um, they have a repository of college catalogs, which is important for the, uh, the non-CUNY schools because from CUNY we can get our own course descriptions, but from non-CUNY we used to have the student provide it and we needed a way to combine that information to give it to faculty so we could eliminate the student from the process. So now College Source's information is merging with our student information to give all of the information needed to faculty. And even better is that it's based on the course description always, not on a conversation with the student that the faculty have to ask, okay, what did you learn in the class? They have the course description in front of them. Um, we have minimal student intervention and the course only has to be evaluated once, no matter how many students come in with that one course from you know, BCC, we only have to send it one time. Uh, and now I'm gonna pass it off to Elkin to give a live demo. Okay. Thank you, Christine. Uh, so what we have done so is uh, we created a script. It uh, was created in Java, right? That is going every day searching for new AAA courses, right? Courses that haven't been evaluated. So this is, this is uh, done thanks to the beautiful job that our database administrator uh, David Lin has done cleaning and putting all the data together because this data is, is besides AO5 data is complemented by uh, other data that is coming from the reporting instance, okay? So it's coming from different places, he put it together and that is the table that this script uses to detect new unevaluated courses. So once an evaluated course is identified, right, we have to, uh, it's divided in two pieces of the script. If it's a CUNY school, right? So we have also a table when we have all the course descriptions for all the catalogs in CUNY. So we go and search that course description. We put together the description, the title, the credits, and then we generate a case, what we call a case, okay? This case 
is uh, is generated using the RESTful APIs that Process Maker offers, right? So, and that case is routed to the specific faculty member in a department. We have a table where we know who are the faculty members responsible for in each subject area. For non-CUNY courses, as Christy mentioned it, we use a third party vendor called College Source and we use a product that they call TES, Transfer Evaluation System, that is a repository of uh, college course catalogs, mostly from the United States. Uh, so you, what you are going to see is a sample of a case for a CUNY institution and later for a non-CUNY. So this is Process Maker. So the advisor receives an email says, hey, there is a course that needs to be evaluated uh, this, this case has to can, can be sent to as many as advisors as needed. And whoever is available, claim it, and then it will, they, they will claim it here and open it in the, in the Process Maker platform. So let's say uh, this one is, uh, let me see, this one is, uh, this one is CUNY, City College. Okay, well, uh, fortunately, this one is one of those courses that, <laughs> that is the description that is in CUNY first. <laughs> Only three words. <laughs> not, not every college has a, 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 a big, long description yeah. in their course catalog, unfortunately. So, but that is the information that is in CUNY first. Uh, hopefully, those courses, they will, have a, a, they will have a long description in the future. So, okay, this is the city college, this is the subject, the catalog number, the title, the credits, and then the advisor of whoever is going to evaluate this course, equate this course, uh, they have some instructions here, right? Some detailed instructions here. And then they proceed to evaluate the course. The course, the subjects have been, are limited to only those that are available within that department, okay? In this case, uh, we send it to probably the education department, right? Yeah. Yes. So those subjects are limited to that specific department. They are not going to see a math class or English course, no, nothing. So they proceed, they say EDU, and then the catalog, this is the most up-to-date catalog that is in CUNIFERS, okay? We are reading that information from CUNIFERS. They proceed, and they, they say this one is going to be equated to two credits. They have also the option to select up to three courses. Usually this happens in science, right? When a chemistry or a bio is equal in an institution to a laboratory and a lecture. So it is one to two, two courses. So they, have, they can add up to three courses here. So this is the sample for a, a CUNY institution. For a non-CUNY, mm. as I mentioned before, we use uh, college source services, right? So before we create a case, we use also college source APIs to retrieve the information about that course. And they give us this beautiful image. Unfortunately, it's an image but it's, that is the way that the company protect their copyright, okay? But it's okay, we take the image and we embed it into the case. Think about how many steps that takes away from a faculty right. member. Think all the links they have to navigate through to find that one, that couple sentence description, it takes a lot of burden off of yeah. them to make this decision. And then they proceed to equate this course. This is, I think, music. And they, uh, MSP. MSP. Yeah. Okay, something like that. Okay? Now, sometimes it could be that this course, the department will say, wait a minute, I think this course should be sent to a different department. Okay? That could happen. So we give the opportunity to the advisor to click here, give us a reason why it should be sent to a different department, and then they push it to admission. And admissions is the one who is going to relate the case 
to the appropriate department. That is the only case when admissions have, have to intervene to reinvent the case. Otherwise, once the course is evaluated, they will receive a nice email saying this course has been evaluated and these are the list of the students who are affected with that uh, uh, new equivalent. Okay? Now, that's it. Now what I want to show you is the reports that we have created in our in-house uh, portal. And this is only mostly for the uh, business owners, okay? So one of them, this is the list of transfer students. Uh, we uh, filter it by semester. And so they can see here how is the status of all their courses. So for instance, this student, all their courses have been evaluated. Well, it's just one, but it says there. And also, it can tell you that ESLR 1007 was equated to ESL 1000. And this was the case number that was used to equate that course. Here we have some that are still pending. Well, no case has been created. And it could be that, yeah, this is a international institution. So for international institutions, what we have created also in this platform that is accessible by students is a form that they complete. Let me show you one example uh, of this form. Uh, oops, you know, I, I think I would like to show a real student. I don't want to know it. So I would just want to tell that it's a form we present to the student. They can copy and paste the information, right? But they have to provide the link from where they are bringing that information. This is the first choice. The second choice that we give to the student is that they can upload a document, a PDF, and then upload the document. And once they click submit, they will be creating the case that is sent to the appropriate department. They don't have to walk around looking for uh, the signature of an advisor or a faculty member. Thank you.